Hey everyone, Anthony here. Uh, I just wanted to bring this up, talk about this. Uh, yesterday, last night, I removed uh, 96 Ethereum from my BlockFi uh, interest earning account. Uh, and the reason I did that was because their interest rates are way too low. To justify the risk of them holding my cryptocurrency, because I don't know if they're gonna go out of business, if they're gonna screw up and lose the money, if they're gonna get hacked or, or what. Like I I wanna be like more in control and it, it's always been like the cryptocurrency thing to be decentralized and you be your own bank and not have anyone else in control of your money. But the interest rates, when I first joined BlockFi, I don't remember what the interest rates were, like 7%, 6% or something like that uh, on like, ridiculously high amounts like 50 50 bitcoins i think it was i don't remember the exact rates but it was like 50 bitcoins you could earn 70 percent or seven percent interest on which was like crazy now it's down last month they changed it to it was half a bitcoin you will earn five percent interest and anything over half a bitcoin you would earn two percent interest and with ethereum it was 15 Ethereum, you would earn 4.5%, and anything over 15 Ethereum, you would earn 2% on. And now those rates change down even lower to half a Bitcoin you will earn 4% on, and uh, five Ethereum you will earn 4% on. Already as is, let me log into my BlockFi account, but I made like $500 last month in BlockFi, which $500 isn't, enough to compensate me for the risk of losing it was like three hundred thousand dollars or something like that i had in my blackfi account so five hundred dollars a month doesn't justify the risk of losing my cryptocurrency for me maybe it does to other people i don't know so i still have half a bitcoin in there uh and the thing with blackfi they always announce that they're lowering their rates at the end of the month and they give you one free withdrawal every single month. By the time you they announce that their rates are lower, you only have like a day before, a day to make your decision before. So say, say you wanna withdraw Bitcoin and Ethereum. Well, you can't do that. You have to wait until the next month to withdraw the next one. So you can withdraw Ethereum one month and then Bitcoin the next month. Man, why is my head all cloudy? You can withdraw more, you can withdraw multiple times a month, but then you have to pay a fee. And the fee for Ethereum is 0 0.02 Ethereum, which is maybe like $45 or something. Anyway, last month when they announced that they were lowering their fees from whatever it was down to half a Bitcoin and 15 Ethereum, I was like, okay, it's time to get out to move my funds somewhere else. Even if I just put my Bitcoin and Ethereum into a wallet not earning any interest, to me that's a lot safer than getting paid a little bit of interest on having my funds in BlockFi with the risk of them going out of business or getting hacked or something like that. And I don't wanna be one of those people who ends up losing all of my money, losing $300,000 because I was greedy and wanted to make $500 a month it would be even less than that. I don't know if I if I kept my cryptocurrency in BlockFi for this next coming month I, and cryptocurrency prices stayed the same, maybe like $300, $350 around there, maybe less uh, I would earn for that month. And if I was to lose, if BlockFi got hacked or went out of business or whatever, if I was to lose like $300,000 just to make $300 a month. Yeah, that's just me getting greedy and that's way too much risk for me. So I wanted to talk about, I brought this up uh, in a previous video like a year, year and a half ago when I was first researching putting my money into BlockFi, maybe not a year and a half ago, maybe like a year ago. When I was first researching putting my money into BlockFi, it was my guess that what BlockFi was doing to have these high interest rates was using venture capital, using money from people who invested into their business. They're using that money to raise interest rates to pay people to deposit their cryptocurrency because then that'll attract customers and a user base and everything like that, which is a very sneaky way. I'm not accusing BlockFi of doing this at all, but if the government wants to get 
people's information on who uses cryptocurrency. All they have to do is say like, all right, here BlockFi or they, or open up their own uh, cryptocurrency company and say and attract all these users with their money. Say like, all right, we're now a bank and interest account. You deposit cryptocurrency with us, we'll pay you ten percent. Uh, so now a bunch of people will be coming in for this kind of off topic of the video, but a bunch of people will be sending money to this bank account, interest account that's really run by the government. And this is just me not even speculating, just saying what could the government can do to get your information. So now you're like, oh, 10 percent. That's awesome. I'm going to send my uh, Bitcoin over there. Well, now when you send your Bitcoin over there, now they see what address that Bitcoin came from. So now your address is linked to your name and then they can track your funds and link all your money to you from that. So uh, I, like I said, I'm not accusing BlockFi of doing that. That's just something I was thinking of. But anyway, what was going on with BlockFi is the, the same thing, at least partially the same thing. Like they were using their venture capital to boost interest rates, to attract people to their business, to attract people to deposit money into BlockFi and to attract customers. I don't believe that there was, and today proves that I was right a year, year and a half ago, proves that I was right about this. But back then, I don't believe there was ever enough demand for loans to justify paying 8%, 10%, whatever on cryptocurrency because there's a supply and demand aspect to to providing loans you need to uh you need demand you need people to want loans because that's how you're paying people the interest so when you take out a loan with blockfi i don't know what percentage it is say like you take out a loan on blockfi you're paying them 10 percent a month for that loan We'll add to that 10%, then 2% goes to BlockFi, 8% goes to the uh, the user who deposited money into BlockFi to be loaned out. But if there's more demand, if there's more supply than there is demand, then interest rates will lower. So if there's more supply, if there's more uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever available to be loaned out, well, then interest rates are going to be lower because there's not enough demand of people wanting to wanting loans needing loans and in order to increase demand uh blockfi would lower interest rates this way it'll attract people to take out loans so instead of someone looking at it like oh i have to pay 10 percent on uh on a loan i'm not going to take out a loan well, then BlockFi will lower interest rates to balance out the market. This way, uh, people will be like, oh, it's only 2% to take out a loan. Now's a good time to take out a loan. Interest rates are low. And conversely of that, when interest rates are high for the provider end of it, uh, people will be like, oh, I'm I'm earning 10% on my, I'm earning 8% on my Ethereum if I put it in. Well, then I'll put my Ethereum in and uh, that increases supply. So that's how BlockFi manipulates or uh, deals with uh, supply and demand side to balance out supply and demand between loans. But like I was saying, I don't think it was ever, I don't think there was ever supply and demand capable of sustaining 6%, 8%, 10% on these loans, people getting paid or people being charged on these loans. I think that those high percentages were being paid uh, with funds from investors and venture capital and everything like that to attract uh, business or to attract clients, to attract customers, to attract people to deposit. And that's the problem when I said that these interest rates weren't sustainable is that, well, when you have high interest rates, when you're paying people 8%, 10% on a loan, then everyone dumps their money into BlockFi because you're, they're getting so much money in interest back. They're getting a good return, a great return on their investment. Like there's some businesses that I know that uh, struggle to make 10% a year uh, profits. So just to be able to put your money into BlockFi and earn 10%, uh, which again, I'm not saying it's 10% now, I'm saying in the past it was like 6%, 8%, whatever. But just to be able to put your money into BlockFi, and it's not like 
Ethereum staking, I'm not familiar with like Cardano staking or other forms of staking, but it's not like Ethereum staking where uh, you have to lock your funds up for an indefinite amount of time. With BlockFi, one of the big advantages of BlockFi is that you can put your money, you can use it as a savings account, basically put your money into BlockFi and have access to it at any time to withdraw. Granted that they approve the withdrawal and it will probably take a day, two days or something to uh, for them to send you the money for you to withdraw, for them to process and approve it. None of this uh, has anything to do with BlockFi going out of business. If BlockFi was a the sole interest earning account or the sole, uh, you know, what's it? I need to get my head right. If BlockFi didn't have any competition is kind of what I'm saying. What I'm bringing up is Coinbase just announced giving 4% interest on USDC and BlockFi gives 7.5% on USDC up to $50,000. $50, Greater than $50,000 is 5%. So USDC is still uh, with BlockFi higher interest than what Coinbase is able to do. And keep in mind, Coinbase is partly the creator of USDC. I'm also, I don't recommend depositing USDC to earn interest. Like these interest rates are high, 7.5%, 5%. It's much higher than these Bitcoin interest rates. The reason is that I don't recommend depositing USDC or any stable coins is that stable coins don't go up in value. Bitcoin will go up in value. So if you deposit USDC, you're, you're missing out on Bitcoin going up in value. So you lose money there. To me, it's more worthwhile to hold Bitcoin and Ethereum, lose out on the interest rates for USDC, because I know I believe in Bitcoin and Ethereum and the prices of that going up. It's, it's a much more solid, stable investment uh, for me to hold Bitcoin. Now, if if I believe we're in a bear market, which I very much do think we're in a bear market, it would make sense to sell your Bitcoin, sell your Ethereum, sell your cryptocurrency for USDC and earn 7.5% uh, interest on those things, because now you're not susceptible to Bitcoin's price going down uh, any further. And the reason... This video is going way out of the scope of this video, but the reason I think uh, we are in a bear market and it's a long sustaining bear market, I'm talking like a year, two years, something like that, uh, is because there's still people fearful of buying in. The amount that cryptocurrency dropped from like $65,000 Bitcoin down to like 28,000, right now it's probably like 33, 35,000 around there people are fearful of getting back in. And I think we're going to be repeating the same bear market from 2018 or so that we saw the long, like a big drop and then a long sweeping decline based off of everything that exactly happened in 2018. But granted, there's a lot more uh, institutional investors. There's a lot more people using cryptocurrency and holding cryptocurrency, a lot more people aware of cryptocurrency. So that 470 Ethereum low is probably going to be uh, higher. Uh, and what I'm talking about is, uh, say in 2018, the drop, the lowest Ethereum went, let's just say it was like 75% uh, uh, lower than, than the high. Well, that's all that I did. I took the high and I went 75% lower uh, than the high. This is why you can't go with percent uh, increases because there is a lot more sustainable volume and activity with cryptocurrency now. So Ethereum will likely be higher. Uh, I don't know why I'm even posting this video. It's not a good video. Hopefully you guys get, it's not a good video relating to the title of what it is. Uh, from what I was reading with Coinbase, because that's what I was thinking. I'm like, all right, Coinbase is starting to have its own savings account now. Well, with Coinbase having its own savings account now, that puts Coinbase, BlockFi and Coinbase in competition with each other. And Coinbase has a larger reputation. 
a higher user base, more funds and resources to develop new savings products and every other product. BlockFi, their credit card seems like a total flop. And man, it's been like a year, two years since they announced that and it's still not released. In the long term, I think BlockFi is going to go out of business, but they're not in jeopardy or trouble right now. But what I was going to say about Coinbase, Coinbase also said that the reason they're so they're only doing USDC uh, deposits for interest earning accounts for the loan side of things. They still have deposits for Ethereum staking for earning interest or whatever. On the loan side of things, they're allowing USDC to be deposited and distributed for lo loans. Uh, the reason they do that is they can do that, they said, because they don't want, uh, I guess, anonymous third parties taking out loans. So if they do it with USDC, they, ha they get to have uh, all your personal information and everything like that. And I'm sure it's probably easier to recover funds and go after people if it's in USDC because that's just the US dollar. If it's in like some cryptocurrency that the co country doesn't recognize as a cryptocurrency, it's probably going to be hard to go after people in court. And what I mean when I say for that, I mean if someone doesn't pay back on the loan, it's going to be harder to recover the funds. Mm -hmm.